Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and just up here sitting next to me on the floor is Cindy Oliver and she's a science fan. So recently the Senate inquiry into excess deaths has commenced in Australia. There have been a number of good quality submissions to the inquiry. But there has also been the usual crazy claims from anti-vaxxers. And a short clip from one of these anti-vaxxers is now going viral on the platform formerly known as Twitter. For instance, Craig Kelly, who was once a member of Parliament in Australia, but not anymore, introduced it like this. Lock them up and throw away the key. The brilliant Dr. J- Janathi Kunadasan testifies before an Australian Senate committee that in Pfizer's own clinical trial, there were more deaths in the vaccinated group than the placebo group. Ooh. So let's have a listen to what this so called brilliant doctor has to say. To reply from Professor Lawler, other than the first one where he said there were no breaches of good clinical conduct. And as I said, I provided date stamps again to him of the documentation for the relevant patients where there were hidden deaths. So with his statement that none of the deaths in the Pfizer trial were due to the vaccine, I went back and reanalyzed the data. So for this trial, there were actually more deaths in the vaccinated arm, 21, compared to the placebo, 17. Actually more deaths in the vaccinated arm, 21, compared to the placebo, 17. Ooh, don't you just love the way they have zoomed in and repeated the last sentence? It's almost like they want to make it easier for me to find the bollocks. This is what we call lying by omission. Either that or she's just ignorant. The numbers she's quoting are correct, but she left out an important piece of information. There were two stages to the clinical trial, a blinded phase where half the recipients received the Pfizer vaccine and half received the placebo, and an unblinded phase where everyone in the placebo group was given the option of having a Pfizer vaccine. In the blinded phase of the trial, there were 16 deaths in the Pfizer group and 15 deaths in the placebo group. After unblinding, over 80% of those in the placebo group chose to get the Pfizer vaccine. There were subsequently three more deaths from the original Pfizer group, two from the original placebo group who received Pfizer after unblinding, and two more deaths from the original placebo group who chose not to take the vaccine. It's hardly surprising that there were more deaths in the Pfizer group when it ballooned to being over. 10 times larger than the placebo group after I'm blinding. And by the way, if you're wondering why I am saying 16 deaths in the Pfizer group and 15 deaths in the placebo group, when the number normally quoted is usually 15 deaths in the Pfizer group and 14 deaths in the placebo group, it's because one of the deaths in the Pfizer group and one of the deaths in the placebo group were from a separate subgroup of people who were HIV positive and they were analysed separately. So the first part of the clip is bollocks. Let's have a listen to what else the so-called brilliant doctor has to say. Of the deaths in the vaccinated arm, only three of them had autopsies. But in the vaccinated arm, 10 of those deaths, 10 of the 21 deaths, were people who were sudden adult death found dead. They were people who died whilst they were in the laundry, people who had a cardiac arrest when they were walking, people who never woke up from their sleep, people who their neighbours called and said, there's a smell in this apartment next door. I think we need to, uh, you know, you need to go and check this. So people had, there was a sudden adult death signal, found death signal, in the vaccinated deaths. Of that 10 sudden adult death found dead, there were only two autopsies, only one results available. That's the sudden cardiac death. Of that 10 sudden adult death found dead, there were only two autopsies, 
only one result is available. That's the sudden cardiac death. The other autopsy report was the gentleman who was found in the laundry by his mother. That result is still not available. So in the first place, how do you say something can't be due to the vaccine if the autopsy result is pending? And for the other ten, uh, eight sudden adult deaths, there were no autopsies. You know, and I think it's really critical that people understand this. I can understand if there's a period of illness that's documented in hospital, there's no autopsy. But for people who die suddenly, people who were well enough to sign up for a clinical trial and they die suddenly and there's no autopsy, I, I have repeatedly asked the TGA for their evidentiary basis for the statement that none of the deaths were due to the vaccine. I haven't had a reply. Ooh, more clever zooming and repeating. Just a reminder, there was no significant difference between the number of deaths in the Pfizer group and the number of deaths in the vaccine group. The doctor just created that bollocks impression through either lying or ignorance. So whether or not autopsies were done isn't particularly relevant. But let's have a look at a couple of these deaths where there were no autopsies anyway. Here's one. He was a 58-year-old white male with a pertinent medical history of hypertension, gastroesophageal reflux disease, insomnia, alcohol abuse, hypernatremia, seizures, myocardial infarction, and cardiomyopathy. He died of a myocardial infarction on the 3rd of November, 2020, 15 days after receiving dose one. So someone with a large number of risk factors for a heart attack had a heart attack. Here's another example where there was no autopsy. She was a 51-year-old white female with a medical history of hypothyroidism, COPD, hypertension, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, osteoarthritis, and postmenopause. She died of a myocardial infarction on the 4th of November, 2020, 36 days after receiving dose 2. So there weren't any autopsies in either of these cases but there were medical histories consistent with the cause of death. So there was no reasonable reason to think it was related to the study intervention. Oh, and one more thing, both of these people got placebo. It's quite impossible for the deaths to be related to the vaccine. But the doctor did bring up a few cases of people who were vaccinated that she described as sudden adult death cases. Now, you may be thinking that she's talking about healthy young people. She's not. These are the details of the person who was found in the laundry by his mother. He was relatively young at 53, but he had hypoglycemia, COPD, and had previously had a heart attack. Another case she mentioned was the person that the neighbours had been alerted to by the smell. Let's have a look at that one. She was 78 years old and had a history of high cholesterol, peripheral arterial occlusive disease, esophageal stenosis, diastolic dysfunction, elevated blood pressure and angiopathy. Oh, and she was a smoker. In fact, none of what the doctor refers to as sudden adult deaths were in healthy people. They all had risk factors that are associated with early death. If this wasn't the case, maybe she would have a point. And if there were actually significantly more deaths in the vaccine group than the placebo group prior to unblinding, she would have a point. But neither of these things are true. She is just talking bollocks. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. Although it's not a particularly long video, I had actually planned to make it longer. I was going to talk about some of the 
other things that people had presented that actually showed that excess deaths are definitely not related to vaccines. But it's been a little bit challenging trying to work on my videos and research them without a lounge suite. I used to, when I was preparing my videos, I used to sit on a lounge chair and I used to have the laptop on the sort of the chair arm next to me and sort of type away on it. And Cindy would often come and either sit on my lap or sit next to me on the chair and it was all fine. Cindy still wants to sit on the on my lap, but I'm now sitting on a little office chair that I rescued off the side of the road. And when Cindy jumps up on, on my lap, I then can't put the laptop on my lap and I have to put on this little table sort of to the side, but then I can't reach it properly to type. And so it's just not working very well. I did try to get up early this morning at six o'clock because Cindy normally likes to sleep in. So I thought I'd get a couple of hours in before she got up. But this morning she decides she'll get up at the same time as me. So, oh, and one other thing is I, I t- after we did get off and get up, I thought, okay, well, we'll go for a, we'll go for, I've got, I've had breakfast and everything. I decided I'll take Cindy for a walk. Well, while we were out walking, I got bowled over by a rather large dog and I think I've actually broken a rib, so I'm in a bit of pain as well. But anyway, enough about me whinging. Um, If you have liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And, of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.